Maybe you've been wondering about ways you can save energy and money at home or at your school, business, or organization. Or perhaps you're looking for success stories about Minnesotans like you that have become more energy efficient and are harnessing clean energy while simultaneously strengthening their local economies and protecting the environment. Energize tells the story of the Minnesotans leading renewable energy and energy efficiency projects across the state. Join us on our journey to help build Minnesota's clean energy future. Welcome to Energized, communities building Minnesota's clean energy future, where we'll travel across Minnesota looking at what everyday people are doing to save energy, save money, and power their lives with clean, renewable energy. You may think that in order to make an impact, you need to make dramatic changes, but throughout our journey, we'll learn about ways people are making small changes that add up to big impacts in their communities and for our state. Each of these examples gives us a sense of what's possible in our own communities and some concrete examples of how we might move forward. Our first stop is with the Clean Energy Resource Teams, or CERTS, the thread that connects these stories. CERTS is a nonpartisan, non-advocacy group that works with citizens across the state to strengthen their communities by supporting money-saving energy efficiency projects and building entrepreneurship around Minnesota's growing renewable energy industries. This really based on the whole notion that communities were excited about distributed power, people were excited about renewable energy, and that we wanted to provide them with a vehicle to actually do that in their own communities. And that if communities got together and got to know each other, that they could actually affect change on the ground. The main goal of CERTS is to help communities identify and implement uh, clean energy projects and we think of those as either renewable energy or energy efficiency. CERTS seeks to connect people with the resources and the people and the technical assistance that they're looking for to essentially make their clean energy dreams come true. People have these great ideas about solar panels, wind turbines, um, experiments in biomass and sometimes they just need the extra nudge, the extra dollars or maybe the extra idea to make that happen and that's what CERTS tries to offer them. We really try to help increase the effectiveness of whatever communities um, ideas are for local energy projects. We, we don't come in to try to be the project manager, try to run things. We try to connect them to the tools and resources to help them make a bigger splash with whatever they're doing. It's a really fun organization. I, uh, I don't think there's any other organization that's as good as is good at partnering as CERTS is. Energy independence is important. Everybody's for energy independence now, but what does it really mean? To me, it means being able to produce our own energy at the local level and for each one of us to be part of the energy solutions. And I think that that's what CERTS is all about, about helping to empower people and to, um, you know, help to build the strengths that communities have to find solutions to meet their energy needs. CERT splits Minnesota into seven regions, the Northwest, Northeast, Central, West Central, Southwest, Southeast, and Metro. In this documentary, you'll hear the story of an amazing community in each of the regions that's working to build their clean energy future. These projects each received seed funding from CERTS, money that leverages additional dollars and that's used specifically for labor to help create and retain jobs here in the state. Beyond this small amount of funding, CERT staff and citizen-led regional steering committees provide projects with technical assistance and guidance. The people behind these projects are diverse. They include small business owners, residents, farmers, members of environmental groups, local utility representatives, local, state, and federal government staff, and elected leaders, teachers, researchers, and more, all who share common goals and values. They want strong communities, local jobs, and secure, clean, reliable energy. Let's visit some of those folks now to learn more. 
Wolf Ridge's mission is to develop a citizenry that has the knowledge, skills, commitment, and motivation to work together for a quality environment. They're an accredited residential environmental learning center that immerses people of all ages in hands-on direct experiences in nature. Wolf Ridge works on many projects, all aimed at energy sustainability, including teacher training, installing efficient chalkboard lighting in three classrooms, and installing a solar hot water heating demonstration in the Science Center. private nonprofit, we're also an accredited school. And so typically students, kids of really all ages come to Wolf Ridge to learn about everything in relation to the environment. Whether that be energy, nature, or themselves, a little outdoor recreation. Many come for school, some come for summer camp, some come with other organized groups that'll spend three to five, maybe even four weeks here, let alone three to five days being the most common. We're a place where kids can come and experience the connections between their lives and the rest of the environment in ways that they don't normally do in school when they're using paper and typical things you'd use in school. So, um, With that said, you know, Wolf Ridge is such a holistic program where they, um, they look at the cultural history of the area, uh, looking at the ecology of the area, um, and uh, as well as bringing the element of personal growth. So allowing students to really connect with other individuals with the hopes of then being really good stewards to the environment as well. Well, the classes on energy have uh, been timely and uh, important and, and CERT's uh, financial assistance for that uh, has been very helpful. Um, Some kids come in and they don't realize that, you know, solar panel, solar energy or water you can use hydro and, and um, wind power. And by just bringing that knowledge and, and giving a definition of that, and then after that, we let them explore it and they get to experience it. The impact we see with energy renewal and, and kids and renewable energies that they're learning about is quite fun. That it really is a ball to be with kids. Because, you know, as you think about it, for people my age, this is new stuff. This is things that, that I'm just learning about at the same time in many cases the kids are learning about them. And yet, these are kids who are growing up with this. This is a paradigm shift for society that is completely new and different. And so it's exciting to see children that something I'm shocked and amazed by, they're not, they're not really blown away at all. They look at it and go, well, of course we'd create renewable energies. Well, of course, this totally makes sense. Conservation, well, recycling, yeah, we've been doing that for years. What's new? There's nothing like having the sun hit a solar panel, heat the water, and then wash your hands in that water right there. There's nothing greater learning, you know, because so much is given to kids, whether it's media or even in our classes, but when they can feel it or taste it or smell it, then they, that they can take home with them. And SEARCH has provided some of the impetus, some of the money, some of the ongoing support to do that. We teach and then they explore and then we reflect. So these students can just gain some, some small skills that we hope that they take back home with them, that they can apply just small steps that can make a really big difference. Some fun demonstrations for kids is pretty important and to have representations of what this mystery thing called energy is about because uh, there's a lot of unseen parts to it and uh, I'm still working on it after three years but my goal is to make some of these mysteries come alive. I'm really thankful when people like CERTs come forward to Wolf Ridge and are able to help us. Because we can do our thing day to day to keep our programs running, but to do new curriculum, new efforts, especially that are, are cutting edge, that are addressing changing needs of society on a regular basis, isn't always easy for us to do. It's a busy place, the staff is stressed in many ways. And so the ability to get support to keep us at the cutting edge is, is really helpful and really helps Wolf Ridge to bring our new generations to the cutting edge as well. The 
Rural Renewable Energy Alliance, or REAL, is striving to address rural poverty, foster energy security, and reduce greenhouse gas emissions by breaking down the financial and informational barriers to the widespread use of solar energy. By manufacturing state-of-the-art solar air heating systems locally and installing them on low-income families' homes, REAL endeavors to make solar energy accessible to people of all income levels. REAL is a nonprofit organization, and our mission as a nonprofit is to make solar energy accessible to people of all income levels. REAL has been in existence uh, as a 501c3 nonprofit since uh, 2000. We actually uh, came into existence uh, originally. Jason Edens, our founding director, um, was actually working as a teacher at the time, and he um, brought students out, refurbished old collectors, and put them in the homes of low income families that couldn't afford solar. But one of the things that definitely helped create REAL was the fact that I was on energy assistance myself for many years growing up and continued to struggle with the cost of, of home heating like many of us actually do. And we actually found a solar heating system in a dumpster in the Twin Cities. And we took it out of the dumpster and it was still in decent condition and we repaired it and we installed it on our home and it saved our families such a significant amount of money and energy of course that that was kind of one of the aha moments. The impact that REAL has had on communities has been extensive for the sheer fact that it, it um, helps lower income households, lower their utility costs, and that in turn increases the dollars that they have in their pockets to spend within the community and that helps the overall community itself economically. We install solar heating systems on the homes of low income households. And the way we define low income is whether or not a family will qualify for energy assistance. Essentially, the concept of delivering solar heat to low income families has been, has been very much adopted in the state of Minnesota. The state of Minnesota now is basically the only state in the union that is incorporating solar space heat into the energy assistance and weatherization program. Here in Minnesota, they're, they're, we don't have coal. We don't have natural gas, we don't have a propane, we don't have oil. None of that stuff originates in Minnesota. So all of the, all of the expenditure that we, uh, you know, all of the money that we expend to heat our homes in Minnesota is basically money that leaves this state. And so it's one of the things that we're really trying to do is, is create green jobs in Minnesota and keep money in Minnesota circling around in Minnesota. You know, if I were to ask someone what's propane going to cost in 10 years or fuel oil in 10 years, who knows? In fact, the only thing we know is that it's going to cost more. And so by stabilizing our energy costs through the use of solar thermal, we know that our low-income neighbors and our low-income communities will, ha will be at less risk um, if there's an energy spike or an energy crisis. Organizations like the Clean Energy Resource Teams and a, a number of other collaborations have been just super important to the, the success of our organization. I mean, CERTS has been groundbreaking, I think, across the country in terms of what they've been able to establish in Minnesota for renewable energy and for a, um, a center for people to, a way for people to connect who are interested in renewable energy, a way to um, communicate with other people what, what is going on in their, in their region, in their area. Um, CERTS has been fantastic for real. Uh, we got another grant through CERTS to do an installation um, more in our area, in the Pine River area at the transfer station. And that was a 10 collector system. It was a larger system using larger collectors in the St. Louis County garage. But a similar scenario, you know, you have this wide open south facing wall with no windows, you know, no doors typically. And so it's a really great application for solar air heat. The building is used during the day when you're getting the solar air heat gain. So. And this is a, a public facility where a lot of people go to, of course, uh, bring their, their solid waste and their recyclables and that type of thing. So it's a very visible location in the county. When we're out on installs, it's a pretty positive feeling. Um, I mean, interacting with some of the, the um, families that we're doing our solar assistance program for is um, it's pretty inspirational. 
Um, a lot of them get really excited about the systems. Um, it's something that they wouldn't normally have access to. So for us to come out and dedicate, you know, two or three people dedicate a full day to installing and setting up a, a you know, multi-thousand dollar system for them is pretty exciting for them. Showing them how it works is always a pretty fun part of the day at the very end, walking them through the controls and everything like that, seeing how they get kind of excited about what the system's going to do for them. Well, what we're going to do today is we're going to be installing two solar uh, air heating panels on this particular structure behind me. So we arrive at a job site, having prepared all of the parts for the job and knowing, having done a site analysis, making sure that the site has adequate solar exposure and so on. And we arrive at the job site and then what we do is we'll typically on a retrofit, we'll cut off the siding of the house and then we'll basically just cut two holes in the house so we have a supply hole and a return side and then mount the collectors and hook up the ductwork and the fans. Um, Backdraft dampers that keep, the, it's essentially like a unidirectional door that keeps uh, any um, air from coming back into the house when the collectors are cold at night, for instance, or when you don't want any heat during the summertime, those doors, those, they, they close. And we'll be putting a fan in there. And so the fan is basically what runs the system. It just recirculates air from the house um, through the collectors, scrubs the heat off of the collectors when there's heat to give in the collectors and when the homeowner has turned the thermostat and is calling for heat. So when that happens, they turn that, they, they turn that up and the fan kicks on and it pulls the, the, uh, the heat into the house. The installation on a retrofit takes us about a day and a half. And on a new construction like this habitat job here, um, it takes less than a day usually number of people that have given us more hard data to it. You know, this has saved me $300 this year. Um, some people have, have said that the combination between weatherization and solar assistance, uh, that they've, they've saved 50% of their heating bill annually. Look no further than the Pork and Plants Farm and Greenhouses outside of Altura to find an example of Minnesota's can-do spirit and entrepreneurship in the clean energy sector. Folks here are converting row crop farmland to native grasses and cover crops for bioenergy production. The biomass is eventually harvested, pelletized on farm, and used as a heating source for the greenhouses. The whole project with the biomass pretty much all got started based on our family business with the greenhouse. Uh, having a greenhouse in the northern hemisphere and growing year round, it takes a tremendous amount of energy to heat those greenhouses all year. So that's kind of what fueled this whole project. The project originally started when Eric walked into our office and presented the idea to us uh, of growing native grasses on some ground to get. Uh, to grow his own energy, if you would say. Our involvement with uh, Pork and Plants and Eric's project here actually started in December of 2007. Eric contacted us and um, one of the things we have at AURI is a pilot plant with a pelleting facility, pellet mills and so forth. And Eric approached us and he had the idea of, he had bought the pellet mills already and we know the story of what he did here, trying to de develop his own biomass pellet fuel. Uh, the big thing for pelleting that I, got, that, re that I really got interested into was the idea of having this fuel at a stable fuel source. Everything that I've used in the past, from LP gas to, to shell corn, which is a, I, I like as a fuel source, but the problem is the volatility, volatility of price. Both those products are speculator driven nowadays. There's no, there really is no true supply and demand anymore. So when you're doing cash flows on a business model, it gets kind of hard. You stay, take, for, you know, take for granted. But you know, take example of corn. When I got into it, I bought corn as cheap as a dollar fifteen a bushel. When I got, when I kind of switched to the pelleting, we were as high as seven dollars a bushel. Um, we hear and we we see a lot of information on on the TV about utilizing renewable energy, biomass sources. But what's so unique about this one is it's locally grown energy. He took a huge step taking row crop land and putting in perennial grasses to use as an energy source. When you look at the economics, you know, if, if most of these biomass crops have around 7,000 BTUs per pound, with the pelleting you can, you end up with a pelleted product that is probably $120, $125 a ton. And we were able to uh, 
network them and write a grant to CERTS to help fund for some soil testing to get some baseline information because once you get the baseline information you can start building off that and writing other grants to start fueling some of the work and stuff, uh, research that needed to be done. One of my personal interests was the native prairie and it was in 07 I planted 20 acres of my, of my farmland in the native prairie. Uh, unfortunately it was kind of a double whammy. That, that was the start of when the commodity prices really got one high. If you ask my neighbors those couple years, the first couple years of like 07 and 08, they'd look at you and think I'm, you know, think I'm insane. You know, I, put, I took pretty good productive land out of production and put it into this research and out of my own pocket. Land that is reconstructed in prairie instead over time builds up soil fertility. So I'm very interested in exploring and studying the ecology of reconstructed prairie strips to find perhaps knowledge that can become applicable on making the cultivated field more sustainable. And the main reason is, you know, I'm personally driven with this idea of, of being in the energy independent, you know, of, stay, you know of, let's say of not having all these external forces on us saying we got to pay this no matter what you, you know, what's going on out there. Uh, the other side of it is, is the environmental side. That's why the, nat the natives are still one of my personal interests, if we can figure it all out, is the environmental benefits of, of doing something besides production agriculture, your conventional row crops. Imagine you and your neighbors coming together to learn about money and energy saving tips and then having a personal home visit that helps implement energy saving upgrades. The Metro CERT joined forces on a project being led by the Center for Energy and the Environment, Neighborhood Energy Connection, Xcel Energy, and Centerpoint Energy to do just that. The pilot program demonstrates the effectiveness of low-cost measures and behavior change on residential energy use. The pilot recruits participants block by block and uses educational workshops and home visits to identify and implement energy efficiency upgrades that enhance home comfort and energy efficiency. I work with the Neighborhood Energy Connection, and so we're a St. Paul uh, nonprofit group, and we work with Xcel Energy to do all of the residential energy audits in Minnesota. So take the Home Energy Squad or the, the Neighborhood Energy Service Program uh, back to its origin. It was kind of a, originally a, a, a plan to um, fix the kind of major problems that we were seeing with the home energy audit and energy efficiency programs in the state. Um, the two major problems with the existing programs were that they didn't really reach people, um, you know, because there was, it was just an Excel billing. Um, so it's kind of impersonal, people weren't taking action. And then the second problem was that when you actually got a home energy audit, there was like a 5% action rate. So people who got the, got the audit, got all this information, weren't actually doing the things that would save them energy and save, us, save them money. We set up a partnership in 2009 with the Clean Energy Resource Teams where they needed to do community workshops and we needed to find uh, homes to, uh, do the, to take this service. So we started this uh, series of community workshops in St. Paul. Um, they got funding through the Legislative Citizen Commission on Minnesota Resources to put on the workshops and we have funding from XL Energy to perform the service. It's worked pretty well. We've done over 700 houses through these workshops so far. Um, people come to a workshop, they get a, uh, a great deal. The workshop actually pays for more than half of the cost of the materials, so it's bought down all the way for, to $30. So basically you get $80 to $100 worth of materials installed for free and all of the energy savings that they provide for a $30 fee. This year we started a new program something that instead of just doing an inspection of a house's energy conservation uh, like an audit does, uh, we decided to try uh, doing direct installations of simple energy saving materials. Something that, you know, that 
most folks could do themselves, but people don't have the time. It does take some skills. Um, so we have hired crews of technicians to go out and do these installations directly. People who have gone through the home energy audits have really raved about it and had good experiences. Uh, I think they've gotten excited to do the bigger changes that they need to do and it's enabled a lot of people who just didn't have the time or energy to get around to it to do things like install the programmable thermostats which make a big difference. Well what happens is a um, when you sign up for a visit a crew will come to your house. It's two or three people. Um, they'll sit down with you, ask you, they'll show you the things that we install, ask you which ones you want, and then we'll get busy installing them. It usually takes about an hour and a half and um, while they're there, they're, uh, they'll poke their head into your attic to see how your installation is looking. They'll look at your furnace and your water heater to see if you could use a more efficient one. And they'll calculate what the cost savings would be for you. Uh, how much money that will save you over the next few years. I think everybody who's participated in the home visit has been really thrilled. Um, you know, sometimes people leave the workshop a little bit like, well, what is this home visit going to be like? But almost always when they're done at the home visit, they're like totally on board, ready to tell their neighbors. Um, we found that when we come back to a neighborhood after doing one round of workshops, um, people are even more excited about it. We've got a built-in set of people who are ready to recruit their neighbors because they've done the workshop, enjoyed it, but it was just a workshop in the evening, and then had a home visit, and that was pretty unique. So. We had a team of two people come to our house and uh, they kind of walked through and um, pointed out some areas where we could achieve some savings um, in energy and money. Uh, they weather stripped our door, they um, put some aerators in our faucets that are fabulous, uh, they uh, replaced our shower heads and wrapped our water heater in a blanket. Um, the gentleman who is here also gave us some good ideas about uh, ways to replace our windows that would be less costly. We've had a number of estimates because the windows in our house are original and um, yeah, he had some really good ideas for ways we could replace our windows without a second mortgage. <laughs> you know, we've gotten a lot of, uh, a lot of great recognition from former customers. We have a whole wall full of thank you cards. So it's been, uh, people have realized how good a deal it is. And their houses are more comfortable once we put weather stripping on. Their houses are warmer in the winter. And uh, people, almost everyone will see a drop in their gas and electric bill. So folks really recognize the value. So CERTS goes, uh, builds relationships with the neighborhoods, um, organizes the workshop, presents the workshop, and then works to um, you know, build those lasting relationships with the neighborhood because we found that the number one thing that gets people out to these workshops is good face-to-face -face interaction between people they already know. Minnesota is full of inspiring stories about students, teachers, and school administrators working to reduce energy costs and increase renewable energy. Wilmer High School is such an example. There, students, teachers, and volunteers have worked tirelessly to upgrade an ancient greenhouse to produce healthy, local foods for their school and community. The Wilmer Community Greenhouse is a nonprofit endeavor begun by the Wilmer High School Youth Energy Summit, or YES, team to bring various community groups together for the purpose of growing local produce year-round. This project will demonstrate the energy saving and health benefits of growing produce at the local level. Produce will be donated to the local food shelf, the school district food service, and other groups. Oh yeah, did we mention? The greenhouse is heated primarily by solar heat and biomass burning sources. Youth Energy Summit project as a whole started in 2007 and we were one of the first schools on board with Prairie Woods Environmental Learning Center. And that year there were about five or six seniors that joined the project 
and they wanted to grow produce locally in order to save energy, um, get more trucks off of the road, burning less fossil fuel, less pollutants in the air. So this was actually started as a renewable energy initiative. The Wilmer Greenhouse Project started as part of the Youth Energy Summit, or YES, program that the Foundation supports. We've been doing the program now for the past three years, and the program is designed to help students understand and learn about the issues and opportunities around energy. And so the Wilmer High School started supporting a team in 2007. They were with our first year, and um, they chose the greenhouse as their energy project. The greenhouse has had a great impact on the Wilmer community with getting the local kids getting involved with knowing what it's all about not having chemicals, growing the, the, the produce, selling it at the market, it, and all chemical free. At this site, I've been here several times and there's always lots of people around. They're always giving tours. Um, I, I realize that the kids have been very involved. Um, 20 to 30 kids coming here in their free time to be active uh, with the greenhouse. Um, getting a lot of community involvement, whether it's uh, other groups of students coming through to tour, preschoolers are working with contractors, local contractors as well. It's probably most important for the young people to be involved in projects like this because it's, it's a new experience. A lot of people would never know what a biomass burner is um, or they wouldn't meet half of the people they meet here at the greenhouse. It's just really fun to be able to experience something new. I like coming and volunteering because you get to garden, work with the plants, and it's something I normally wouldn't get to do. And there's a lot of different kids who come here just for different reasons, either for like a class or just also as a volunteer. And you get to see people that you usually don't get to talk to, and it's just a fun experience. Yes, helps uh, the green, the Wilmer greenhouse uh, by serving to give them resources and sort of guidelines on how to plan community events or um, get the word out and we also host three events throughout the school year where the students can attend and learn more about energy um, action projects and sort of help them expand what they've been doing in years past as well. Search involvement at the Wilmer Greenhouse has been uh, providing some seed grant money for a couple of different things, including uh, the solar panels, the solar hot water panels that went into heat the greenhouse, and then also for the in-floor uh, heating installation. The things that I've experienced here, the fun things that I've seen, is just the kids really being involved with each other in the community and uh, really getting to know what um, you know green is all about. There are so many great stories of what has happened with the YES program, and the Wilmer Greenhouse is just one example. Um, seeing businesses be able to pilot or test products related to renewable energy right here and have students be part of that, and then those businesses go on to actually add renewable energy to their uh, portfolio of their business and expand their business is a wonderful opportunity not only for the students but for the businesses. Young people need to get involved with projects like this because when they're our age, when they're in their 30s and 40s out there in the workforce, it's my feeling that this is going to be standard practice. A lot of our small towns have great old buildings in disrepair and it takes dedicated volunteers to rescue and restore these community treasures. Such an organization is the Sleepy Eye Preservation Group, a nonprofit organization that's been restoring Sleepy Eye's 1902 C&W Railroad Depot, a building on the National Register since 1984. In 1990, the Sleepy Eye Area Historical Society was given the interior space rent-free to house, organize, and provide a well-maintained and much-visited museum. Since then, the group has worked with Southwest CERT to fund the labor costs associated with a range of building efficiency improvements, including removing all old storm windows and installing more efficient versions. The project's successes have included reduced energy consumption, lowered energy bills, and greater long-term sustainability for both the depot and the Sleepy Eye Preservation Group.
adamant about preserving this building and then of course establishing a museum because Sleepy Eye does have a lot of history and mostly goes back to our Native Americans and the uh, flour mill. The Preservation um, Committee and um, the, the Historical Society had put together a grant and then they were able to receive some storm windows for energy efficiency. The renovation here has been almost complete. Uh, I mean, the building started the roof, the windows, uh, which were a very important part. The floors, the doors, the, all the woodwork in here, it's just uh, amazing what the craftspeople have done with this building. They sent letters out to past people who have lived here and former school. Uh, people at school here and uh, they really, we, uh, they got thousands of dollars and then of course that too with a lot of volunteer labor really uh, put this uh, Now this was, this was just black in here and uh, they, had, they hired somebody from Fairfax I think to clean it was just black because of coal and uh, in this room they painted the ceiling but in the other room back of me uh, they were able to refinish it and all the four floors are original and all the woodwork is original, so it's, it's really a wonderful building. But there are 59 storm windows that were put in. At that time, there wasn't any storm windows in the north part at all, and uh, the south part, they were worn out, you know, so. Well, we did an audit, uh, and we estimated a, a pretty significant savings. I think now the numbers show, according to the computer, about 30% savings in energy. I think uh, people got a little pride in this building. Uh, when a visitor comes or something, they, they like to brag about the building, something you should go and see. I think that uh, we try to attract tourists to the building. I think that this uh, project on the windows is an example of how efficient you can make an older building without a huge investment, uh, and, and yet as time goes along we'll see what we can do to make it more energy efficient and also preserve the building and its contents. The contents are, are very important to the community's history. It proves that you can take an old building, preserve it, refurbish it, uh, tuck it, um, and come up with something magnificent. Sustainability is a priority for the University of Minnesota Crookston and students there help lead the charge for Evergreen Hall to become the first Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design or LEAD certified residence facility in the U of M system. The building's construction focused on minimizing environmental impact and saving energy throughout its development and construction. Students at the University of Minnesota Crookston worked with faculty and staff to help research and guide the projects that included the feasibility and design layout of a methane digester, as well as an inventory of building to building energy usage and creating a dorm energy conservation competition. Projects were designed to develop leadership skills and incorporate a real world living laboratory through collaboration among students, faculty and staff on clean energy projects related to sustainable development. When I was a junior here at UMC, we had heard that uh, you know there was a need for a new dorm, um, and, and we had found out that it was going to be built, but it it wasn't going to be built with any sort of uh, certifications like LEED or like the B3 benchmarking system that that's um, kind of the Minnesota state standard um, or Energy Star, Star standard or, or anything like that. When the design component started, uh, Chris Waltz and Eric Elgin actually brought up LEED certification. Um, got residential life facilities involved and really started a fire on campus, it became contagious and um, LEED certification was 
pushed at that point. It's a campus-wide initiative and it's actually a, a national initiative in terms of uh, sustainability on campuses, uh, energy conservation. We had to go through an educational process, uh, which is where the, the CERTS funding uh, really helped out. They, they, they were able to give us the, the resources to bring in speakers that could talk specifically on either green building or, or um, you know, whether it was agriculture and climate change, um, a variety of issues. So, um, Being that it was LEAD, I think a new awareness, a new light was brought forth. I think uh, many people, including myself, before I had spoken with Chris and Eric, I had no idea what LEAD was. And as soon as I saw the fire in them about how important it was, I had them educate me as well as educated myself on how important it is. And I think many other students caught that same fire and they really educated themselves, saw the importance, and I think that has really went forth into the community as well. People are excited that we have this building and it's really a, it's a statement that this is the direction we're going. All the uh, elements of Becoming a LEED certified building is there's lots of different things you can do, but uh, the carpeting is made out of uh, plastic milk cartons. Uh, floors are made out of, the, wood, the floors there are made out of uh, bamboo. The countertops in the, uh, uh, in the rooms are made out of banana peels. Uh, we've recycled some wood uh, for part of the building, uh, so it's just lots of stuff. Uh, some of the counters are made out of uh, recycled glass, uh, just a lot of those kinds of things. Different types of fans and different types of energy that's part of the building. Um, the, the building materials themselves, there's a lot of those types of things that are making it LEED certified. The students were in on the conversations, we were, we were making our point, and they had valid arguments on why not to do it, you know, the upfront costs and, and, and among other things. Um, but we were able to just work on it, you know, if, if we would have got everything we wanted, this building would be, you know, LEED Platinum certified. Um, but we compromised on things, and that was really a, a, a great learning experience for, for students outside the classroom. Um, you know, I mean, all this collaboration and partnerships that we were able to build, and, and it's really what, what formed the, the dorm that we had. We hope you've been inspired by the creativity and passion of the people featured in each of these stories. These projects are just a sampling of the energy conservation, energy efficiency, and renewable energy efforts that Minnesotans are pursuing. In fact, since 2003, CERTS has helped support more than 130 projects statewide. CERTS has a completely open door policy. Um, anyone can get involved with CERTS at any time. Really all we ask is that you show up with an interest and a passion in clean energy issues. If you want to be involved in CERTS, you can uh, click on our website and just say, uh, I want to sign up and we get you on our listserv just like that and you'll know about all of our meetings, you'll get our monthly updates, any type of uh, funding uh, uh, opportunities, we'll send those out to you. So it's as easy as a click on the website, a phone call, an email, or just showing up to one of our meetings and there's no decoder ring, there's no secret handshake, uh, you're an official CERTS member. There are a myriad of ways you can get involved. Visit our website at mncerts.org to find out about free certs tours or events near you, learn about grant opportunities, or take part in one of our simple, action-oriented, certified campaigns. You know, our ideal future, energy future, in Minnesota would be where we are actually energy exporters instead of importers. Minnesota cities really are expected to play a lead role in their communities and looking at energy efficiency and looking at clean energy technology and how to have those services, those practices readily available for citizens. The CERTS approach is one of pragmatism and cooperation. It's a model for how tangible economic, social, and environmental benefits can be achieved by reaching across traditional interest groups and taking a true community-based approach. Please come join us. We look forward to working with you and your community to together continue building our clean energy future.
save energy, save money, and power their lives with clean, renewable energy. You may think that in order to make an impact, you need to make dramatic changes. But throughout our journey, we'll learn about ways people are making small changes that add up to big impacts in their communities and for our state. Each of these examples gives us a sense of what's possible in our own communities and some concrete examples of how we might move forward. Our first stop is with the Clean Energy Resource Teams, or CERTS, the thread that connects these stories. CERTS is a nonpartisan, non-advocacy group that works with citizens across the state to strengthen their communities by supporting money-saving energy efficiency projects and building entrepreneurship around Minnesota's growing renewable energy industries. This really based on the whole notion that communities were excited about distributed power, people were excited about renewable energy, and that we wanted to provide them with a vehicle to actually do that in their own communities, and that if communities got together and got to know each other, that they could actually affect change on the ground. The main goal of Maybe you've been wondering about ways you can save energy and money at home or at your school, business, or organization. Or perhaps you're looking for success stories about Minnesotans like you that have become more energy efficient and are harnessing clean energy while simultaneously strengthening their local economies and protecting the environment. Energize tells the story of the Minnesotans leading renewable energy and energy efficiency projects across the state. Join us on our journey to help build Minnesota's clean energy future. Welcome to Energized, communities building Minnesota's clean energy future, where we'll travel across Minnesota looking at what everyday people are doing to save... CERTS is to help communities identify and implement uh, clean energy projects, and we think of those as either renewable energy or energy efficiency. CERTS seeks to connect people with the resources and the people and the technical assistance that they're looking for to essentially make their clean energy dreams come true. People have these great ideas about solar panels, wind turbines, um, experiments in biomass, and sometimes they just need the extra nudge, the extra dollars, or maybe the extra idea to make that happen, and that's what CERTS tries to offer them. We really try to help increase the effectiveness of whatever communities' um, ideas are for local energy projects. We we don't come in to try to be the project manager, try to run things. We try to connect them to the tools and resources to help them make a bigger splash with whatever they're doing. It's a really fun organization. I, uh, I don't think there's any other organization that's as good as, as good at partnering as CERTS is. Energy independence is important. Everybody's for energy independence now, but what does it really mean? To me, it means being able to produce our own energy at the local level and for each one of us. Common goals and values. They want strong communities, local jobs, and secure, clean, reliable energy. Let's visit some of those folks now to learn more. Wolf Ridge's mission is to develop a citizenry that has the knowledge, skills, commitment, and motivation to work together for a quality environment. They're an accredited residential environmental learning center that immerses people of all ages in hands-on direct experiences in nature. Wolf Ridge works on many projects, all aimed at energy sustainability, including teacher training, installing efficient chalkboard lighting in three classrooms, and installing a solar hot water heating demonstration in the Science Center. private nonprofit, we're also an accredited school. It's to be part of the energy solutions. And I think that that's what CERTS is all about, about helping to empower people and to, um, you know, help to build the strengths 
that communities have to find solutions to meet their energy needs. CERT splits Minnesota into seven regions, the Northwest, Northeast, Central, West Central, Southwest, Southeast, and Metro. In this documentary, you'll hear the story of an amazing community in each of the regions that's working to build their clean energy future. These projects each received seed funding from CERTs, money that leverages additional dollars and that's used specifically for labor to help create and retain jobs here in the state. Beyond this small amount of funding, CERT staff and citizen-led regional steering committees provide projects with technical assistance and guidance. The people behind these projects are diverse. They include small business owners, residents, farmers, members of environmental groups, local utility representatives, local, state, and federal government staff, and elected leaders, teachers, researchers, and more, all who share